and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Productions channel here at YouTube. And of course, this is Heavy Thrashhead, the guy who runs this channel. And this is a currently listening to episode. And uh, this is, this one's just going to be all vinyl. Next one's going to be uh, CDs because I'm waiting for a few to come in. But um, here, I had enough to, um, you know, do an episode. But it's definitely um, a dress down that's playing in the background, which... Um, I had a play, uh, showed this actually, excuse me, in one of my current, you know, five random records videos, but I didn't do a needle drop because of, I was worried that I might get a strike, even though some of you might have heard the sound anyway, but I was in the mood to play it, so we'll see if I uh, get a copyright strike, but this of course is YNT's or Yesterday and Today's uh, debut album from 1976, Wild Glares coming in, but, um, yeah, um, just a classic album, if you ask me, just a good, straight-up, heavy, hard rock album. But, um, yeah, it's definitely probably one of my favorite. I really like the early Y&T stuff, that, you know, from the debut album, um, at least up to, like, Mean Street, because, like, their best albums. Um, so let's definitely get into the actual albums I really have been listening to. Uh, let's definitely start off with this one. This, of course, is Stillwater. Um, a uh, they they get tagged as like a southern rock band, and there is definitely some southern rock in here, but the singing is a bit more melodic. Doesn't have that you know that southern grit to it. It's got more of a melodic sort of uh, singing to it. Almost kind of uh, reminding me a little bit of uh, the singing that's like on some of those Molly Hatchet albums, at least the Take No Prisoners, not, no, nah, 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 not like that, but a bit melodic. Uh, so definitely a little, little bad comparison, but still is a good album. Um, this is their debut record from like 1977, but um, it's released on the Capricorn label. Um, definitely not bad. Uh, first side is very lightweight, uh, really, because it's almost kind of on the AOR side a bit. But the second side is actually the killer side, if you ask me. Stuff like Mindbender and, uh, fuck, uh, Universal uh, Fool. And there's just some good tracks on, uh, on uh, side two than really on side one. That's just me. It's definitely one of those albums where the, uh, the second side is actually the best side, while the first side's kind of like, uh, it's not really all that great. But again, it's a, a still a, a pretty good uh, listen. Very enjoyable. But it's not totally, you know, mind-blowing shit, but still good. But if I'm in the mood for, like, Southern Rock, uh, Molly Hatch just seems to be the band that I go to. Uh, here we go, the next album. Um, Savoy Brown, Looking In. Um, this, of course, has a German pressing, if you're wondering. So it's got a gatefold. Which I'll show off. But, um, I haven't heard this, I haven't heard this sound in quite a while. I do like Savoy Brown, if you ask me. Of course, um, it features some um, ex-members uh, that would go on to form, you know, like Foghat. But this is just a straight-up, uh, bluesy, uh, you know, hard rock. But, um, good, though. But at times there is a little bit of that 60s sound kind of, you know, that creeps in here and there. Uh, but tracks on here such as Poor Girl are just good. But, yeah, of course, uh, the reason why I wanted to listen to this anyway and the first time when I, you know, saw this is because of the artwork. Yeah. But still, still good. Now it's definitely going to get uh, to some two classic uh, releases, though. 
Uriah Heep. Demons and wizards. It's Uriah Heep. What do you need to know? It's a killer album, though. Killer, heavy, uh, hard rock album. Uh, the Wizard, Traveler in Time, Easy Living, Poets, Justice, uh, Circle of Hands, Rainbow Demon, All My Life, uh, Paradise to Spell. It's a fucking great album. Uh, this is just, um, sure there's definitely some of that deep purple sound in there due to the organs, but at the same time, it's a bit, almost at times kind of heavier than deep purple in a way, but yet, yet two can't be beaten. Just a great album. Um, really enjoy it, really enjoy this. However, even though this uh, next one is good, but I don't think it's nearly as good as Demons and Wizards. This, of course, is the album that was released after Demons and Wizards, The Magician's Birthday. I know Harmless Rebel showed this in his um, last video, but he said that the, mid, uh, the title track is probably the weakest track off of here. I disagree with that. It's not the weakest track. To me, the weakest track is Rain. Yeah, yeah it's a very soft track, and it's not the best song off of here, because, again, it's stacked up against tracks such as Sunrise, Spider Woman, Blind Eye, um, Echoes in the Dark, and then you got, you know, it, 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 it's stacked on, t it's, those, those tracks are stacked on top of it, and it just kind of seems to, you know, feel almost misplaced in some way, because of, uh, between the two albums, Demons and Wizards is definitely the stronger album of the two, but this one isn't that bad. It still is a very solid album from Uriah Heep. Uh, Sweet Lorraine Tales. Uh, to me, I, I, guess, I guess I can see why some might would say that The Magician's Birthday isn't as solid a track as it is. It's around, it, it's around 10 minutes long. Um, that are a little over uh, 10 minutes, and it's just a very... I, I guess you can say a little hokey in places, but for me, I'm fine with it. But yet, to be quite honest, really, it isn't as good as Demons and Wizards or any other, you know, Uriah Heap. Uh, keeping up with sort of progish sort of rock, here we go with some really early sticks. Uh, not in the best shape, though. It's from my dad's collection. It wasn't really in the best, but it's definitely our early wooden nickel pressing. Uh, me, I haven't really heard a whole lot of early Styx albums, so, you know, from start to finish. All I've heard is, like, some of their other albums, such as Pieces of Eight and The Grand Illusion and parts of Equinox and, of course, uh, Kilroy was here, but this is really early Styx, but this is actually a fine album, actually. Actually, in some places, this is almost even better than some of the later stuff. Um, to me, I guess in some ways, Styx's his albums, it's like where the, the, to me, the second sides were usually the best part of the albums. While the first sides are kind of, you know, a little hokey in some places, but here, this is where I pretty much feel where both side A and side uh, B are just, are on the same level. Rock and roll feeling, which isn't a too bad song, um, a song for Suzanne isn't too bad, A Man Like Me, but then when we get to side, uh, you know, tails on here, since heads, tails, we get like lies in Southern Woman, uh, Christopher, Mr. Christopher, and the title track. Holy shit. That, that's a good way to end the album. It's pro, it's, it's, it's almost heavy. For a Styx album, there's some heavy moments on here, if anything. Sure, it's definitely not metal, but even for a, a Styx album, if anyone thought that the heaviest they ever got was fucking Miss America, they haven't even heard any of some of the stuff off of this right here. Um... Man of Miracles is probably a track that even beats Mi Miss America in terms of, you know, real good, hard rock. But this is just good. Good album.
Uh, next up, uh, definitely kind of taking a little dip, even though this isn't a bad album, I always want to check out some of Mick Ralph's stuff before Bad Company, but this of course is Mop the Hoople with Mott. Um, uh, enjoyable album, it's definitely early glam, uh, you know, rock, but is isn't bad. To me though, I will say the best track off here is uh, I'm a Cadillac, El Camino Dol Doloroso, I butchered that. But to me, that's like, it's around nine minutes. It's actually almost over nine minutes. It's the longest song off the sound, but it's actually, to me, one of the best tracks off the sound. But yet, the whole entire album isn't all that bad. It definitely was a pretty good listen. Yeah, here we go with another one. Um, that's kind of, that actually I kind of find a little better than that Moth the Hoople, but this is, of course, has a track that's pretty overplayed if you ask me. Of course it's Golden Earring with Moon Tan. This of course is a US pressing which um, doesn't have two tracks that were on the UK pressing or European pressing. But you know what? This is definitely a good album besides having Radar Love which uh, is a, just a overplayed track but it's definitely at least not like Twilight Zone where that track gets you know, easily overplayed, but it's far from a bad track. But here, uh, Candy's Going Bad, uh, Blue Tree, Blue Sea. This, this is a pretty prog album. This is definitely, you know, prog rock, but almost a bit more progish in some places. It, it, it's none that just seems to be really flirting with a lot of different stuff. I wouldn't say it's. Nah, it probably is on maybe the same level as a later Pink Floyd, maybe. But it's definitely not um, as, you know, off the wall in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of that stuff with the later Pink Floyd, but still at least has a little bit of some of that going on here. Um, however, looking on uh, line, it was like rated as one of the top 40, you know, cosmic rock albums. Yet, there was another album that I was going to have in here that was listed on there that I have to probably find a day to. But I'm not going to say which album. But when I get around to actually do it, it will be in another curtain listening to episode, but probably not the one where I show nothing but CDs. But, uh, who knows, maybe. But, fine album. It's definitely one that I actually enjoyed. Definitely good. But now it's time to get to two albums I actually find to be quite classics in a way. Um, first starting off with uh, James Gang's Bang, uh, which of course this features, this is the debut James Gang album with uh, Tommy Bolin. Um, to me, I like this album. I freaking like this album. Uh, the Devil is Singing Our Song. Uh, mm, Alexis, Ride the Wind, Got No Time for Trouble uh, from Another Time. This is a good album. However, the only drawback of the sound is fucking Rather Be Alone With You. I could have done without that track. It's not that good of a track. When it's stacked up against quite a bit of really good, you know, good tracks, actually. But that, I'm just not really a fan of that the type of style. You may have to probably punch it in on YouTube, it's rather be alone with you, and you probably might get why I'm, I'm not too much into that track. If it was left off, probably would have been a much more of a solid album, but it's just not the best track on here. But other than that, it's a good album. I still like this album. Now we go with the last one for this episode. This, of course, is... Uh, Gamma 2, which of course features uh, Ronnie Montrose and a... Uh... Oh fuck, uh, Danny Kermat, Danny Kermassi, I think, is the drummer, who was, of course was another member from Montrose. Um, I like this album. Some will say this is a little AOR, but even for AOR, if AOR sounded more like this, I really probably would enjoy it more. This is at times just a more of a hard rock album, if anything. Uh, uh, Main Streak, Four Horsemen, which is probably the most energetic track on this album. It's 
And of course, uh, Danny Kermassi's drumming on this is just fantastic, if anything. The way it just starts off is very speedish, almost kind of like speed metal, due to just how energetic it is, and, and also Ronnie Montrose's uh, guitar work is just great. But to me, I like the sound Mayday and every... It, it, to me, this is a, a great album. I like this. Uh, record's done just like this video is done. So I, um, if you've definitely heard most of these albums, you can definitely comment uh, on them. So until then, uh, this is Happy Twitch and saying I'm out. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.